Hello, what would be a four-dimensional space or a ten-dimensional space? Well, the concept of dimension has to do with the question of how many parameters you really need if you want to describe something. For example, look at the plane H in R3 that has equation x1 minus x2 plus 2x3 is equal to zero. We can describe a point on this plane by giving its coordinates, x1, x2 and x3. But by doing so, we need three parameters. Let's look at a more efficient way to describe these points. First of all, we observe that H is the solution set of a homogeneous linear equation. And because of that, it is a linear subspace of R3. Now consider the vectors v1 is minus 1, 3, 2, and v2 is 2, 2, 0. You can easily verify that these two vectors satisfy the equations for H. In other words, v1 and v2 both belong to our subspace. Note that v1 and v2 are not parallel, so these two vectors form an independent set. And if we determine all vectors x that can be written as a linear combination of v1 and v2, that is to say all x for which the equation c1 times v1 plus c2 times v2 is equal to x is consistent, you will find that this is the case if and only if x satisfies the equation x1 minus x2 plus 2x3 is equal to zero. In other words, the span of v1 and v2 is h. Thus, we can say that v1 and v2 constitute the basis for this subspace. Let's use the script letter b as a name for this basis. Now take the vector x is 1, 13, 6. Please verify for yourself that this vector belongs to the subspace h. Well then, since v1 and v2 span our subspace, there should be scalars c1 and c2 such that c1 times v1 plus c2 times v2 is equal to x. Now, this is a vector equation, and if we want to find c1 and c2, we must solve this equation. So, we write down the, the augmented matrix and use row operations to bring this matrix to echelon form. As expected, the system is consistent, and we find that c1 is 3 and c2 is 2. Note that there are no free variables, so our solution for C1 and C2 is unique. This should not come as a surprise, since the columns of the coefficient matrix are V1 and V2. And we know that these vectors are linearly independent. So, x is equal to 3V1 plus 2V2. The weights 3 and 2 that we had to give to V1 and V2 in order to produce x are called the coordinates of x relative to the basis b. We can put them in a vector. This vector is called the coordinate vector of x relative to b. The notation for this vector is an x between square brackets and with b as a subscript. Let's look at the geometric meaning of these coordinates. The basis b determines a grid on the plane, and the coordinates tell us something about the position of x in this grid. All the vectors that belong to our subspace can be treated in this way. So we may conclude that, thanks to our basis B, we need only two parameters to describe the points of H. Note that a different basis for our subspace H will give different coordinates for the same x. Suppose, for example, that we have W1 is 110 and W2 is 042. Please verify that these two vectors also constitute a basis for our subspace H. Let's call this basis C. Now let us look again at X is 1, 13, 6. This time X must be written as a linear combination of W1 and W2. So we take the corresponding augmented matrix and solve the system. We find that the weights that must be given to W1 and W2 are 1 and 3. So the coordinate vector of x relative to c is the vector 1, 3. 
And in the picture you can see that the plane h and the vector x are the same as before, but we are using a different grid on h. So the coordinates of x depend on the choice of the basis for the subspace, which means that you have to know which basis to use before you can compute the coordinates of x. But no matter what basis we choose for our subspace, it will always consist of two vectors. So anyhow, we need two parameters to describe the points of the plane h. It can be shown that it always goes this way. So, if we count how many vectors there are in a basis of a subspace, then we can say that any other basis for that subspace has the same amount of vectors. Now this number is called the dimension of the subspace. So, the plane h in our example has dimension 2. In class you will learn more about this. So, see you in class.